The federal Green Party has announced its new interim leader. Dr. Amita Kuttner, an astrophysicist, will guide the party until a new leader is elected next year. Now, Dr. Kuttner joins us now from the West Coast. Thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so to give a little bit of a background to our audience, you grew up in Vancouver in a multicultural home. You studied in California and have a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. You're also the youngest person to hold the position of a federal party leader. So what about your experiences and background make you a good fit for this role? Well, I think that that's... Uh there's a number of things that prepare me for this. I also have been involved in federal politics for three years now. I was a candidate in the 2019 election in Bernie Wienor Seymour. I ran for leadership of the Green Party last year, so I got a good look of what it takes to run a leadership race and what is needed to actually do the basics of this role. But the background that I have in having run a, a, a nonprofit organization or actually co-founded a nonprofit organization and all my studies have given me a particular look at how to work well with other people and evaluate complex situations for hopefully the best outcome for everyone. All right. And Dr. Kuttner, you know, it's no secret that the Green Party is going through a bit of a rough patch with former leader Annamie Paul leaving under strained circumstances. So what made you want to step into this position at this time and why specifically the Green Party? Well, I'll start by saying why the Green Party. I've been with the Green Party for a number of years, so it was obvious that I was going to be staying here. But I originally chose the Green Party because I am interested in representation before partisanship and making sure that we actually take a holistic look at all the problems that our societies are facing rather than just pinpointing certain policies or picking a place on the political spectrum and having to defend our place. I wanted to step up and help at this time because really of how difficult the last year was. It was very hard for me to watch and to feel for everybody going through these difficult things and to see the party you know, materially damaged on the surface from it. And given the skill set that I had, I, I really felt like I could help and that desire to really help us get it back on track, serve the people that I care about so much in this movement is why I stepped up. All right, and how do you plan on bringing party members together during this fractured time? Well, I think for the most part, most party members were not involved in any of this. So it's a matter there to get in touch with everybody, make sure that they're doing all right, see how they're doing, see what they need so that we can really organize with strength across the country. But for everyone who is and has been directly hurt, I think that it starts with an invitation to go into a process of rebuilding trust to honor their experiences and the feelings that they have. All right. Now, we've seen, switching gears a little bit here, we've seen, you know, the devastating impacts that climate change can have, especially with the recent floods and the mudslides impacting the West Coast where you are right now. So what role does the Green Party play in tackling this important issue? We play an absolutely essential role. And I will add that the mudslides and the floods have been very personal to me. I know they're affecting the East Coast now as well because I lost my own family. My mother died and my house was destroyed in a mudslide in North Vancouver in 2005. So it really hits home and truly it's what drives me in, in working with the party because I feel like it's necessary. I feel like every single other approach to this crisis is not good enough. We bring a very unique perspective about treating every single part of it, not just the symptoms, from transformational societal and economic change to make sure we're focusing on well-being and resilience and also making sure that everybody is very, very basically prepared as these crises roll in, as well as supporting people in the process of recovery, which I am too intimately familiar with and is also something we have to be ready for as a community dealing with trauma. And Dr. Kuttner, I'm very sorry for your loss and, you know, saying this 16 years on that we're still seeing the effects of climate change, but even more so. So it's obviously a very important issue. It's at the forefront for everyone to be thinking of, um, including the prime minister. We know that Justin Trudeau was recently traveling out to B.C. to discuss the floods with Premier Horgan. So what do you think Ottawa needs to do in all of this? Well, Ottawa has a lot of power in terms of being able to provide support, oversight and structure. So support comes in a few different forms and that some of that is administrative, but a lot of it is financial, really being able to put that weight behind everybody who's going forward. But we also need to have a structured intergovernmental plan from every level to be able to actually prepare for this stuff and in response. And I think if it wasn't obvious before that this is proven, that that needs to get underway immediately. And I believe that that's the intention from the throne speech 
And I hope to see that actualized in a very concrete and immediate and you know, full manner. All right. And Dr. Kuttner, with your appointment comes a lot of firsts for a federal party leader, the first trans leader, the first leader of East Asian descent and the youngest person, as we mentioned, to hold this position. So former leader Annamy Paul, we know she was the first black Jewish woman to head up a federal party. And she's actually said that she faced discrimination from within the Green Party. You've also revealed in past interviews that you've been the target of transphobia. So how do you navigate that as you step into this new role? Well, I, I knew it was part of it, that's for sure. <laughs> There's a couple of factors that are giving me a lot of hope at this moment. And one is that I, I think that what I experienced was from, you know, a, a few members here and there, not with the great intention of any group to harm. And I also think that it's not just about this party. That is just something that exists within our, our systems and especially within our political systems, our politics, our government is founded on a system of colonialism, white supremacy. Um, and patriarchy. So that exists and it's going to be exacerbated in those systems. But I think it's going to be fine to work through it. And it's important to actually dig in and say, no, these issues are very real. They're very concrete in in our party. And we have a responsibility of showing up to do better. And I also think that they exist in every other party. And we will give ourselves strength if we can be honest about it and have those conversations. I'm also Void because we have a new federal council. Our new federal council is, I believe, the most diverse that probably anyone's seen. We have an indigenous woman as our president, a black woman as our VP English, and um, a disabled person as our VP French. So we are a group, and you know, I don't like actually focusing on the identity of, of all these people, but that is to say we bring diverse lived experiences to this role, and hopefully we can inform a process of healing and understanding. We look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Kuttner. Thank you so much.